y'all welcome to a reading vlog this is a special reading vlog that i am doing with a host of other creators who will be listed down in the description box below because i am not going to try to attempt to remember everybody right now in this moment because i i'm gonna miss somebody because it's just my nature so as you can see from the title of this video we are all doing this joint project where we are reading the best of certain categories for the Goodreads Choice Awards and I was reached out to by Bethany over at Beautifully Bookish Bethany and she asked me if I would be interested in doing the comics and graphic novel section which of course why wouldn't I like ugh, yes love it so I started for 2012 so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with 2012 I think there's some other people who went through 2012 and some people who started 2013 but I'm going from 2012 to 2013 to 2022 so hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion there all right so I'm gonna go through and just let y'all know what the winners were for each year so in 2012 the winner was The Walking Dead volume 16 in 2013 the winner was Beautiful Creatures the manga 2014 was Serenity. 2015 was Saga Volume 4. 2016 was Adulthood is a Myth. 2017 is Big Mushy Happy Lump. 2018 was Hurting Cats. 2019 is Pumpkin Heads. 2020 is Heartstopper Volume 3. 2021 is Lore Olympus. And 2022 is Heartstopper Volume 4. There are some adjustments that I had to make to this because some of these I have already read. So what I did, and one of them specifically, I decided to skip. So we are allowed to skip if it's just not going to work out for us to read that specific title and go with the runner up. I, for 2012, it's probably going to be the biggest part of this video for me, to be honest with you, because it's volume 16 of The Walking Dead, and I've only read up to volume 4, and I started from scratch. At the time of me filming this clip, I have read volume 1. So I think I'm going to be basically fixating on doing this year by year um i i think that that's going to be the best method i'm going to do it year by year instead of hopping all over the place so i'm going to start with focusing primarily on 2012 so that's a lot of reading to do but there's that 2013 i still am going to be reading beautiful creatures the manga because of the fact that i have not read that i've read the entire beautiful creature series before by Margaret soul and Cami garcia i don't remember explicit details because it's been so long it's probably been anywhere between six to eight years since i've read these books so there's that i'm not particularly looking forward to reading that one but it is what it is i'm glad my library still had a copy of it so i was able to check that out because i was going to be pissed if i had to buy it 2014 is where things get a little interesting because i'm actually going to skip 2014 because it's attached to a tv show that i have no interest in watching and so i know in reading it i would be extremely confused on where any of this information is going to like I, I just wouldn't do well with it the runner up for 2014 is Sac saga volume 3 i've already read saga volume 3 so i'm not going to be reading any content from 2014 so there's that and then in 2015 we have saga volume 4 as a winner which i've already read saga volume 4 as well then 2016 17 and 18 are all part of a series which they're super super thin um adulthood is a myth big mushy happy lump and hurting cats they're all part of a series and they're thin i checked them out from the library they're not really they'll take me probably 30 minutes to read although people seem to love them but i'm not sure whether i'm gonna see or feel the same appeal we'll see when i get 2019 was pumpkin heads which i read and hated and heartstopper 2 was your runner up so i will be not reading anything i will be not <laughs> i won't be reading anything from 2019 either because i've read both the winner and the runner-up for that year 2020 is heartstopper like i said volume three which i own a copy of heartstopper volume three behind it's no yeah it's up there right in there in there so i will be reading heartstopper volume three and volume four because it's 2020 winner and a 2022 um winner and then lore olympus which i'm going to be reading through the webtoons app instead of buying the first volume because it's a webcomic that's still free and so i'll just make sure i read 
the chapters that are listed for Lore Olympus Volume 1, I will make sure that I read that number of chapters when I'm on the app. I think if I had to say like what am I most excited for reading it probably is Lore Olympus because so many people love Lore Olympus and then I want to see if The Walking Dead is going to be a series that I'm going to continue with. Now one of the things that I'll be discussing as I read the winners is I'm going to go through each year and kind of discuss the other nominees as well and kind of think about in terms of Goodreads being a good place for determining graphic novel and comic book winners because I personally don't think that they are. I've seen some of the nominees that have been listed for some of these years and I'm like there's that. I don't think that we have a huge community of comic book and graphic novel and manga readers on Goodreads at all times so I feel like that also plays a role into how these things are skewed, which basically is a popularity contest. Because some of these went up against some competitors, and I'm like, how the hell did you win? Like, Heartstopper Volume 4 won for 2022. Loki kind of irritated about that because Wash Day Diaries was also a nominee. And granted, I haven't read Heartstopper Volume 4, but Wash Day Diaries was, was bomb as fuck, so there's that. All right, y'all. Um, that's just the intro clip to this. Whenever I read a little bit more of The Walking Dead, I will jump in and kind of provide my thoughts, non-spoilery of course, until we get to that winning volume, which is The Walking Dead Volume 16. <laughs> to do this quick because I'm about to do sprints on this channel. Needless to say, it is like five days. What is it say? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. <laughs> it's like three days before this is about to go up and I have not had a chance to read anything really. It's been hectic. It's been wild. It's been a lot. It's award season for me, so work is a little busy. I am on page 118 of volume three of The Walking Dead. <laughs> this series is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of drama. It's a lot of watching people kind of break down because they're in a dire situation. So everybody's like turning on everybody. And I knew I was going to do a check and I was going to try to do like a check in every five volumes. So five, 10, 15, and then reading the award winning volume. And I just had to check in now because essentially our group has moved to another location. I really don't even want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it at all for anybody. But they've moved to another location that seemingly is supposed to be more secure. And they come across some other people who they don't know if they can or cannot trust them and so we start to see some dynamics change especially between rick and Lori. so rick is the guy that i was talking about before that is the police officer that we're pretty much following at since the beginning of the series and he is even having some character breakdown in the sense that he feels like he has this sense of authority because he's a part of law enforcement and there's some very interesting dynamics happening between him and Lori. Lori is, is his wife and Lori has done some things in Rick's absence, assuming that Rick has been dead. And so they're dealing with that kind of hanging over their head. Although for volumes one and two and most of its volume, they've pretty much ignored that major issue. And we're starting to see their relationship have some sort of breakdown. Even Rick is kind of not being this upstanding citizen that he thinks he is. He thinks that he's walking on moral high ground and he's really not. So as as a outside perspective of someone who's not in their current situation, you get to see his character kind of lose a lot of those characteristics that he would have had prior to this whole zombie apocalypse. 
Now there's this element that has also been introduced to how people turn and what they assumed was happening is actually not the correct assumption. So I'm really interested in seeing how it's going to develop in terms of now that they have this new information. There are a lot of different characters in this, but it's not that, it's not that difficult keeping up with some of the characters, but I do feel like there are so many side characters to the point that somebody can end up dying. Like I think in this volume so far, one, two, three, four, at, at least at the minimum, five. At the minimum, five people have died in this volume. And while three of them, it was easy to keep track of, two of them were side characters that didn't really have strong narratives in the second nor the beginning of this volume. And so it's confusing. But I think that if you're not a fan of violence and gore, this is not gonna be the series for you. <laughs> it's a lot of violence and gore. It's a lot of sexual things that are happening because I think you, human nature kicks in regardless. I think you have a better sense of control over, seemingly you would have a better sense of control over your anger and certain desires and things that you would have kind of like a restraint on without the added stress. So you have all of this stress now being added to each one of these characters. And now who they were when we meet them in volume one is slowly unraveling as we are now walking into volume three. Um, the artwork is great. I think the artwork is outstanding. I believe that The Walking Dead has won in Eisner. I definitely can see why in terms of storytelling. There was some issues that involved a black character that I did not like in volume three and the way that white characters referred to this black character not a racial slur but it was just very like oh that big black guy like you know just stuff like that that just you know never sits well with my spirit but there's that this came out in like 2000 what we started writing this in what 20 was it 2005 2006 maybe they started writing this i'm not sure i would have to double check but yeah i'm gonna get off of here because sprints are in two minutes so i am going to i'm not going to tell anybody on the sprints what i'm reading i'm just telling i'm reading for a secret project and so i'm going to continue to read as many volumes as i can i have a lot to read in 72 hours so this is going to be fun it's going to be fine it's it's going to be fine I'll check in later. <laughs> okay. I listen. <laughs> so <and laughs> this isn't funny. <laughs> but it's so freaking amusing. Okay, so I don't think this is really a spoiler. There's a character who there's a character who we've been with since volume two and he's he's an, an ex-football player and we get introduced to a new character in volume four and clearly he's impressed by her because he's like oh yeah I could tell you work out da 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 and she knows that he played football but he had already been seeing this other woman and so something bad happens throughout the day and they're in the gym, you know, in the gym shooting hoops and basically he's like, oh, you, you know, you just got here and now you can see what, <laughs> you can see that everything's pretty much like a shit show. <laughs> and then she's like, shh, I can tell you what you need. And so sis proceeds to start giving him some fellatio while they're in the gym and his old lady that he was with before is watching through <laughs> through the through the door as he gets fellatio from another woman <laughs> this this whole situation is just everything about this series is so effed up it's so 
it's so dramatic. I've never even seen the TV show. Now I'm curious. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Once again, just popping in. And the group has been pretty much finished with their reading and of course naturally I waited till the last minute to do everything but I finally finished all 16 volumes of The Walking Dead. Now volume 16 is the volume that won for 2012. It was up against Saga Volume 1, Batman Court of Owls, there was Unwritten was on there. There were just some really great series starters and for volume 16 to have one is very interesting because volume 16 is not even the most interesting volume of the series i have shifted back and forth between giving the volumes anywhere from two to three three and a half to four stars it's just been up and down i think my biggest issue with the series so i'll go into plus and minus one i'm gonna go ahead and tell you off the jump off the top off the rip it should not have won a good choice award when i think about the complexity behind saga when i think about the complexity behind even the unwritten series which I think it was volume five that was on there. When I think about the complexity behind Batman Quarter Owls by Scott Snyder, so well done. Huge deconstruction of Batman as a character. I think what we're seeing here is, which is not surprising, is a popularity contest. This is a series that would have been on fire at the time that the awards were announced for this in 2012. It is not surprising that it was a huge contender when you have, you know, production of a TV show, when you have so many people who are invested in it, which, by the way, the TV show is so drastically different than the series. It's not unexpected that it would win the Goodreads Award. However, I already know, based off of these winners and these runners-ups and, and stuff like that, like, this is not a good choice when we're talking about a melody of art and text and amazing storytelling this is not what this category is about i don't even have to read everything to tell you that i can i know that for a fact and i've read a lot of the stuff that's been nominated and stuff that has already won i don't think that a volume 16 is strong enough and b i i just feel like the options were just better for this year now, in terms of my own analysis, I literally, I read 16 volumes of the series. 16. I, I First of all, I'm in amazement that I read 16 volumes of it, and I'm still not even finished with everything that I do need to read, but everything from here on out is going to be much quicker than the 16 volumes that I had to read. Um, so the series, like I've talked about, is definitely a survivalist series. A lot of what happens in this storyline is a back and forth between character study and intense plot. I think the character study is probably the most, it is the most intriguing part of it all because you see people who have lived pretty much a normal life. Um, everything is heavily told from rick's perspective and how he feels about things and we are following him as a central character so he's a good character study in the sense that we see rick as this person who really had things in order things were the way that he wanted them um to be done he was very much so a family man with his son carl and his wife Lori. And so we see him turn from this rational person to being forced into this leadership position that a lot of times I don't think that he can handle mentally because he's just been through so much and he's trying to force himself to be mentally able to handle a lot of the issues in this series, but he's really not capable of doing it. It is 
a very intense character study of how there's like this switch and the analogy of the switch is actually discussed in one of the in one of the volumes which I'm not going to go into any details of any of this because I don't want to spoil it and it's kind of hard to talk about one volume to the next without spoiling it but I will have a not by the time this video goes up but I've been writing reviews as I've been reading this to go ahead and post to Goodreads he is a perfect example of this like almost like a light switch where when you have societal expectations and societal norms people have the capacity to control themselves and maintain but when that structure and that rule of you have to obey societal expectations and fulfill societal norms when that's kind of taken out of the equation for some people a switch it's a switch because they don't have to contain that aggression that violence that recklessness is no longer there and you see that with rick each volume you see these characters kind of spiral into i'm gonna do what i need to do to protect me and mine even if that means I have to kill somebody and not killing the zombies or the walkers or the lurkers or whatever names you want to give them. It literally is I will kill if I need to kill. And you see kids kind of go through these issues where they too are kind of losing their childhood. They're losing the ability to function as kids simply because it's a world that doesn't call or doesn't allow them and doesn't call for them to be but it doesn't allow them to be kids we really see that with carl carl probably for me is one of the more interesting characters because he is a kid that is seeing so much violence commit so much violence to the point that he becomes kind of numb it's normalized and you have to think this is the point at which carl is going through a lot of development his brain is still developing he hasn't even hit puberty yet at the time that i even get to volume 16 carl is probably no more than eight or nine years old so at that point he's becoming so accustomed to seeing the violence that he's numb to death it becomes a people die it is what it is whereas if we were in a normal environment and not in that setting you could see that would be an issue a child normally would not be able to process and cope with death in such an extreme way unless they've been conditioned to do so and i think that's really applicable to a lot of real world examples now where this series falters there's a lot of drama a lot of people trying to reckon with grief and then still having these very human desires a lot of that takes place in the form of very complex interpersonal relationships where someone may have had a spouse or a partner that has died but then they find themselves being attracted to someone else whether that leads to sexual uh, things or not is a completely different story but it, it's very complicated and it's very much so that if we were the last people on earth like would you sleep with me <laughs> so it's very much that but one of the things that I struggle with with Rickman and some things that he does in the beginning of the series that I do not like that I don't like there is some heavy racist things that happen in the beginning one usage of the n-word which i did not like because i didn't see the context or the purpose for it and so i struggled with that and i know that the older that these comics are because a lot of these started coming out i think in like 20 in, at at least 2009 um when you think about the time period in comics and stuff it it's it's you try to make some grace for it but in that situation, it was kind of hard because you had a character who used a racial slur towards a black person and that character wasn't explored in further detail. It wasn't a character of the time. If this character was racist, there was no deep dive into the character analysis to kind of, and I don't want to say justify, but to really explain why you felt the need to have one character just randomly use this racial slur and we're not even going to explore it, talk about it more, no nothing. So that was a complete turn off. I also think that um, Hickman does not do a good job in his treatment of women. There's a lot of violence that happens towards women. 
that I just could not grapple with that was on page rape being a big content warning in this mentioning and on page actually as the act is happening his his treatment of women and the violence towards women is something that really got to me in reading this I had messaged the group and I was like you know I had read volumes like one through four like way back in the day and I think revisiting the volumes in a different time different age I'm in a different point in my life I did not remember it being this violent, nor did I remember it being such an explicitly, it's so explicitly violent towards women. I, I, I was not expecting that. I did not like the treatment specifically of, of our one black woman that is the main character. We actually do not see many black women in this entire series at all. Like, <laughs> literally, we don't see many Black women at all. It's um, it's a very much so a whitewash world, which is unrealistic, completely unrealistic. And there's much to be said about Hickman's decision to go that way. But we have one Black female character out of all of these characters, side characters, main characters, and she is brutally traumatized. And I, as a Black woman reading these comics, struggled with that just a bit because it's not only are you exhibiting violence towards women, but there's a special form of violence that you have, that you have, you know, aligned with this Black woman who is a main character. Granted, she's badass. I think she's amazing. But I hate what she's had to go to go through, and she's often looked at as being suspicious. She's overly strong, and I think there's a little bit of stereotypical things going in with that character development, which I I, I don't necessarily care for. It just makes the series for me very very hard to rate and review because while I do appreciate the conversations that are happening in terms of humanity and how our humanity disappears in moments of high stress or moments when we think the world is coming to it, to an end think about the beginning of the pandemic a lot of people were losing their sense of humanity when it becomes down to protecting yourself and protecting those that you love humanity completely goes out the window and so i felt like we got that um in in a very very nice way through our character development but then we have all these other things happening on the back end in terms of treatment of women racial dynamics that i just was not a huge fan of and so that's why you see such a wide range of review or which you which you will see on goodreads it's going to be a wide range of star ratings for me the star ratings do get better as i get further into the series because i think that as time goes on i don't know whether it was critiquing or whether it was him just kind of reviewing his past work. We start to see less of those issues going forward into the series. But in the very beginning, it just was at a point where I'm like, this is grossly uncomfortable. I'm not sure how people make it through like these first eight or nine volumes of the series. But by the time we start getting into the double digits of the volumes, it does ease up a little bit, which is why my rating skewed a little bit higher when I got into like, 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 it's good higher that being said i will go back and say once again i do not feel like volume 16 was strong enough to win the good reach choice awards i think it had some better contenders there specifically if i had to pick one that i think would have done well and deserved to take the award that year it would have been snyder's quarter owls i think that the deconstruction of batman as a character would have been it just was so much better. And I've, like I said, I've read a handful of things that were nominated for the 2012 award. But I understand too why people wouldn't have picked Batman because a lot of people are not going to be reading superhero comics. I think that with this category in particular, you're going to get a lot of people voting for stuff that has hit mainstream, that people are very familiar with, that is super popular, but you're not going to get the more niche, and, and really not niche in the comic book world, but niche to prose readers, those who are not avid fans or readers of comics and graphic novels, 
that's where you're going to be pulling the majority of your audience from. And so whatever has hit that audience and whatever is more popular, it's what's going to take the winner. I know that we are looking at like, did any of these picks <laughs> or any of these picks, picks that I would have gone with, I mean, from 2012 to 2022? No, I, I can already tell you without having read <laughs> <laughs> some more of the stuff that I need to read the answer for me is going to be straight no um so with that being said I am going to move on to the 2013 pick which is Beautiful Creatures um by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll like I said in the intro clip I have read this entire series it's been years since I read it um the art on this was done by Cassandra Jean everything I've been reading has been black and white <laughs> which is fun that's always fun everything that i literally everything i've read that's probably the most fascinating thing is that everything that i've read so far has been black and white and i think everything wow y'all the only thing that won't be black and white that i'm reading for this entire reading vlog is laura olympus everything's in black and white i just realized that there is no color in anything that I'm reading except Laura Olympus. The next ones following that are Sarah Squibble's collection, which these are really, really thin and short. And then I have Heartstopper Volume 3 and 4 and then Laura Olympus and that's it. These are going to go by much quicker. I can read most of these in about 30 to 45 minutes. So... <laughs> This is gonna this is gonna be a quicker a quicker reading experience on the back end than The Walking Dead. Now keep in mind I read 16 volumes of The Walking Dead in less than 48 hours. So that that says a lot right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and start reading Beautiful Creatures and then I will do another check-in once I've done that. about I just finished or I finished not I just finished I finish the oh what is it the beautiful creatures manga adaptation that really wasn't a manga but had a manga feel to it just really weird vibes going on there I absolutely did not like it I think that if I was to reread the series now as an adult I would not enjoy it. I would not find any type of enjoyment out of reading that series. But let's talk about the actual graphic novel adaptation of it, which the artwork was horrible. <laughs> I hated the I hated the artwork. It was very um stick figureish pencil-y, which I did not enjoy whatsoever i think that the story felt disjointed um or disconnected because of the way that they selected um the way they selected bits and pieces of the of the artwork i mean of the storyline i don't know it just didn't flow as well as i thought it was it follows its main character by the name of ethan Waite, who has his crush on this mysterious girl he dreams about her first and then he comes to find out that her family has lena she has some dark secrets associated with her family because of their history and there's some connection between her and ethan from the past their two families are interconnected in a way and so i remembered all of that from reading the book from watching the movie adaptation back in the day so I already knew the gist of it, but I was looking to see if they were going to do anything new or dynamic with the story. 
and unfortunately they just they just didn't they didn't do anything interesting that was engaging or fun i mean honestly once again we're back at the situation where the goodreads choice awards in every category i'm sure my counterparts who are doing the same thing just in different categories as me like this is nothing more than a popularity contest this this was the winner for 2000 13. The Walking Dead Volume 16 was the winner for 2012. Well, the issue here with all of this, the issue, it went up against some big contenders like Saga. I believe that uh, Montress may have been up there. The Wicked and the Divine. Batman was also, I think, back up there. I know that March... <laughs> March was also chosen for that year as a nominee. This is not a direct reflection of what we would see in something like the Eisners. It's, it's definitely not. This is definitely a popularity contest. What people have a tendency to know the most about. You're not going to really see any superhero comics winning this like Marvel DC. That's not going to really be a thing for the simple fact that it's not, it doesn't have as much popularity. People are not as familiar. They may be familiar with the comics, but in terms of reading, this is what I said at one of my other check-ins is that, you know, people may have familiarity with the names, but in terms of the actual content of the comics, you're not going to get that same you're not going to get that same level of recognition. It just, it is what it is. And so to see something like this, that is not as pop, that is not as well written, that doesn't have good artwork, the storytelling is not cohesive, win over something like March is just frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating. It's so aggravating. It's disgusting. I just don't even, I don't have the words because Every time I look at this category, I'm pissed because every year I read a lot of what's in the categories, not everything, but I do end up reading a good bit of what's in these categories. And so when I get to the point where it's like, okay, I guess this is because this is something that was popular amongst people for this year, this is what people are voting for. There are, there, there's no criteria there's no there is no look at okay is this art good enough is you know is the art good enough is the storytelling good are they working together there's none of that whatsoever and it's it's aggravating and then on top of that i want to know like who's on the selection committee for this stuff that even gets nominated because that's another question like how are y'all choosing what goes on this list that's that's questions for me that need answers i'm very confused about that how you are deciding or figuring out what goes on this list is it just uh, for stuff that you guys are familiar with or what so um essentially i was not a happy camper that's that's pretty much how that lines up i was very pissed at that one the 2013 award when we had so many other nominations that did a heck of a better job so yeah the next ones i'm going to be talking about i'm skipping 2014 and 2015 because i've read the content in both of those years if i'm not mistaken so i've 2012 2013 i'm skipping 14 and 15 because in 2014 I wasn't going to read the winner for that one because it's tied to a TV show that I was not going to watch. And Saga was a runner-up for that one. And then the winner for 2015 was Saga Volume 4, I believe. I've read all of Saga up until Volume 9 and some of Volume 10 through single issues. So anything that's Saga-related, it just is wild. You know, I mean, I mean, just thinking about the nominations overall, even the stuff that I've read that I think is really, really great, there is a lack of range when it comes to these nominations for these for these categories there is a severe lack of range out of all the material out of all the comics and graphic novels that are released in a calendar year or by whatever standards that goodreads use they don't have a lot of range they don't have a lot of knowledge there are no subject matter experts when it comes to pulling from these categories and you can tell even with the stuff that i love there's no reason why saga 
should have been nominated as much as it as it was. Saga appears consistently up until volume Dagon eight and nine, I think, pretty much. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if Saga volume 10 pops up somewhere. That's a tad bit ridiculous. But once again, as I always say, that goes back to there being a lack of range and knowledge when it comes to comics and graphic novels. And as someone who reads a lot of that stuff, it's irritating, it's frustrating because there's so many artists and writers and editors of these comics and graphic novels that go unrecognized on a bigger platform like Goodreads because they don't have subject matter experts. I feel like if they're gonna do this as a continuous awards process and really make it freaking legit, they need subject matter experts, to be honest with you. They really do. Because you cannot tell me that every year the only comic and graphic novels that you are aware of that are releasing are Saga, Lumber Janes, Batman, Wonder... And these are things that I love. Don't get me wrong. But are you seriously expressing to me at this point that you just don't know shit else that has released in an entire year and that's the only thing that you can come up with? is saga and monstrous and even march march like you at some point you have all three volumes appear and it's like we just don't know anything that comes out that's comments and graphic novels so whatever everyone is talking about that's what we're going to put on the list which is why later on in the categories you see hot heart stopper constantly pop up you're going to see Laura Olympus constantly pop up because it's something that's gained traction. It's something that they see via social media. It's something that they see everybody reading. And it's so it's like, okay, then we're going to add this to our nomination list. It's pointless. It's completely pointless. And this whole process has just validated. I feel vindicated for my feelings <laughs> in regard to this shitty ass awards thing that they do every year. I really do. I really do. So I ended up finishing the, the the award winners for 2016, 17, and 18, which is, I'm just so upset about all of this. So the books that won in 2016, 17, and 18 were part of the Sarah Squibbles collection, which the one that won in 2016 was Adult is a Mythhood. And then the one that won in 2017 was Big Mushy Happy Lump. And then 2016, 17, and 2018 would have been um, Herding Cats. So let's dive into these. These I can understand to some extent. The relatability in terms of what people enjoyed out of these i will say when i i had no interest in reading them <laughs> but i have seen like some of the artwork has been turned into memes especially those that relate to the reading community but i did end up really enjoying adult is a myth is adult is a myth adulthood is a myth i did end up enjoying that there were definitely some laugh out loud moments and the idea and the concept that adulthood is not what we anticipated being and being able to relate to so much really is what made me connect with it. I definitely can see why this one would have been extremely popular amongst the group that was reading it. Like having that graphic novel that you can connect with on a very personal level that you can relate to that's humorous has a lot of laugh out loud moments i definitely why i get why it was popular i think because it got a lot of traction in 2016 it ended up winning the subsequent years now do i think that it had some stronger competitors absolutely do i think that these lists y'all are essentially the same every single year with a few adaptations. Absolutely. I also don't like that they have included some children's and middle grade graphic novels in this. I just noticed that as we progress further into the years, 
they start adding children's and middle grade graphic novels. And I think that it's unfair to match up a middle grade graphic novel to an adult title. I just don't think that you would hold the same standards between the two works because they are targeted at completely different demographics. And so how they're constructed, how the text works with the artwork is, is going to be on a different level. How the text and the artwork engages with the reader is going to be on a different level. So I did, I didn't like that idea that I, I noticed that when I went back and I looked at some of the selections that these would have gone up against. Now, would I have voted for adult is a, adulthood is a myth when it came out? Probably not. These are works that, I, I mean, they are enjoyable, but I will say that Adulthood is a Myth is the only one that I think had potential to be a strong competitor for the Goodreads Choice Award. The other two just weren't it. It's interesting when you write from certain things from your experience or from your experience and everybody's not meant to relate to them. And so when we got to Big Mushy Happy Lump as well as when we got to Herding Cats, there were sections that I just could not relate to in terms of being a Black woman and some of the things that Sarah was experiencing. It was just not relatable. And I'm not saying that it has to be relatable, but I think there were parts of the there were parts of the narrative that I didn't really connect with. Like, there's something as small as like, her talking about having greasy hair. I'm a black woman. I put oil and grease in my hair intentionally. So it's moments like that that will take a reader out the story because of lack of ability to connect to it. I'm not saying that everything has to be about my level connection, but I'm just being fully honest and transparent here that I did not enjoy, you know, the second one and the third one as much because I lost that sense of relatability. I think adulthood is a myth was generalized in a way that I could kind of capture the same experience but as we get into big mushy happy lump and we get into herding cats there's kind of a different there's a different connection there that I wasn't able to necessarily relate to I do think that this is a great series or collection of of works where we see a reader talk about their anxiety and how that impacts them on a day-to-day -day basis especially their social anxiety and how they interact with people their overthinking and kind of those cyclical thoughts like I think there's a lot of stuff that people experience and so to kind of take something that a lot of people may struggle with and show that relatability by using humor is a, is a gift. I won't say that Sarah Anderson isn't talented, but I don't know which, like if I would have chosen any of the runner ups necessarily either, because I feel like once again, we're seeing that repetitive narrative. So I think what I'm just coming to terms with in, in this whole experience is I haven't strongly disliked anything except that one, <laughs> the beautiful creatures. I haven't strongly disliked anything. I just, I'm going to go back to what I was saying earlier. The Goodreads team does not have a good grasp on this, this form of, of literature. They do not seem to understand the broadness of it and how many different ways you could go with this category and... I mean, I guess that's why people need to be like, you know what, shut up, you have the eyes nurse. I do have the eyes nurse to look forward to. But once again, like I, this is why I don't take the Good Reach Choice Award seriously, because there is no level of expertise that exists in the creation of these lists. There is no committee that I know of that is a collection of people who truly understand the art form and will pick out of wide variety, a dynamic group of things that will showcase what the, the, just showcase what the graphic novel and comic community is capable of doing. I can already tell you that I know that this is kind of a, you don't really know what you're doing when you put two age categories together. I mean, I feel the same way about the children's where they put middle grade and picture books and everything, they just slosh it all together. And it's just kind of like, I wouldn't even put those two together because it's, it's, it's apples and oranges. Yes, they're all fruit, but it's apples and oranges. 
And it's the same thing what I'm seeing with some of these track records where, not track records, I'm seeing some of these, I'm extremely tired. I'm just, I'm just tired. I, I see that just in how they've been doing the categories essentially. So um, if I had to go with ratings with this one, I think I'm, I am going to give what's it called the... Beautiful Creatures is a two-star read, hands down. And it was just horrible. That was, that I can't believe that. <laughs> but if I had to go with, you know, the 2016, 17, and 18 selections, um, I would give Adulthood is a Myth four stars, and I'll give Big Mushy Happy Lump and Herding Cats three and a half stars. Not the most revolutionary thing that I've ever seen, but I can definitely see where people have built the connection with those uh, the last things that I'm reading, well, I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. I've already finished Lower Olympus. <laughs> I couldn't, I could not wait to get into that, but I'm going to, well, yeah, I'm going to wait to share my thoughts on that one. I'm, I finished Lower Olympus. I am currently in the middle of volume three of Heartstopper, and then I just have volume four to read. And then we are going to wrap this up and close it out. This was a very interesting reading experience, but I think a lot of us are going to feel validated by what we've experienced, which is the fact that Goodreads doesn't know what they're doing. They don't. So I actually had a different um, ending clip, but life happens, shit goes wrong. I'm actually in the middle of editing. <laughs> my last video clip, my closing video clip for this was corrupted. And so we just don't wanna act right now. And I just don't have the capacity for that. So I'm gonna do this again, just wrapping and tying everything together. I did end up reading Lore Olympus, which was the 2021 winner, and then Heartstopper Volume 3 and Heartstopper Volume 4. Heartstopper Volume 3 was the 2020 winner, and Heartstopper Volume 4 was the 2022 winner. Now, going back, because I went through and I looked at whether I thought these things should have won the awards at all, the only one that would have been a possibility for me that I would have voted for had I read it at the time that it was nominated is Lore Olympus. I really, really ended up liking Lore Olympus. It's a Hades and Persephone retelling that has some darker themes to it, content warnings for that one for sexual assault. I think that the storytelling is fun and different. And I think really what got me about this one was the artwork. The artwork is particularly unique and not anything that I've necessarily seen before. The color palette, focuses on pink blue and black like shades of pink and blue and then having that black and then using white and yellow as accent colors it just works very very well it's kind of like a comfy read and I'm really interested in seeing where the relationship is going to de develop between Hades and per Persephone and this is one that I thought about when I finished it I was like oh I must continue this I must continue this one. now what's funny is that I I <laughs> Heartstopper Volume 3 and Heartstopper Volume 4 present a very unique situation. Now, for Heartstopper, Heartstopper Volume 4, which was a 2022 winner, I'm going to be 100 with y'all. That is the same year for Wash Day Diaries, and nothing is ever going to touch Wash Day Diaries for me. I don't care what it is. Wash Day Diaries deserve more respect than what it got from the Good Read Choice Awards. But... I I would have I voted for that one and I still choose that one over Heartstopper Volume 4. Now, 
I, it's almost interesting because you can't talk about Heartstopper Volume 3 and Volume 4 separately. And it's a very interesting thing that Alice Oseman decides to do as we dive into these second volumes, the second set of volumes. Volumes 1 and 2 are very light, whimsical, fun. When you get into Volume 3 and 4, you're getting a much darker story that explores Charlie's mental health. Now, I do appreciate that Alice Oseman did decide to address both eating disorders and mental health and self-harm, so content warnings for all of that stuff. But I'm glad that they made the decision to explore those themes because I think it is something that is important to discuss. I love the fact that we, once again, were in a society or we're in a society where we are coming across queer characters and it's normalized, you know, even if we are facing some issues with coming out, especially when we're looking at Charlie and Nick's relationship. The hiccup with this series and the reason why I can't justify giving either one of these five stars outside of Washley Diaries competing with Heartstopper Volume 4, I, I, I'm on the fence with Volume 3 because you almost get a little bit of whiplash from the turn that the story takes. It's never hinted, nor do you have any idea in volumes one and two that Charlie is having a lot of issues with his mental health. And it, it, it makes sense. It's not that it's not logical for him to have mental health struggles, especially because of the relationship that he has with his mother, the relationship that he has with people at school because he's been bullied so much. It's not that it's illogical. I think that it just comes so quickly without warning and build up that it almost gives you a tad bit of whiplash and so i think that was kind of the commentary for those who did not give it as a high review is the fact that no one felt as though they saw it coming then that's not to say that we didn't get a good build up in volume three but even in volume three we don't really get that build up until the second half so that's where i struggled a little bit i think you know just just kind of wrapping this up because this video is already pretty long i know this video is pretty long already just because I'm already editing it. Y'all, this is, this is exactly what I anticipated. The only one that I think stood the test of both being popular and actually is content aligns is Laura Olympus. That's the only one that I really can, everything else I'm just kind of like, I see the appeal. I know why people like it. And it's not like I dislike it. But would I put this at the top of everything that has released as a comic and graphic novel for that year? Absolutely not. I just I just wouldn't. This is this is not something that I go to. Like I've said a million times before, the Goodreads Choice Awards are never going to be anything that I'm going to go to looking for recommendations in terms of the best of the best. I just I just won't. Not for this category because they don't capture a wide enough net of things that have released. I think that if you're looking for what has hit the popularity stream or mainstream, what people are reading in terms of comics and graphic novels, these are the lists to go to. But outside of that, honestly, not really. It's not really, it's not really one that you would go to for a wide breadth and a diverse and robust group of titles that have come out. I mean, overall, though, I will say that this was a this was a fun reading experience. I learned a lot <laughs> about my stamina when it comes to comics and graphic novels and how much I can read in like a 72 hour period. It's amazing. It's fascinating. Procrastination. Um, that's what I'm good for. I'm always good for that. Anyway, thank you so much to Izzy and, and Bethany for including me in on this. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Make sure you check out everybody else's videos. All the information will be down in the description box below. As always, if you're looking to find me on social media or if you are looking to find any other additional information, I am extremely tired. I don't know what this outro is, but we're going to go with, we're, we're going with it. Check everything out and I'll be back with another video soon.